Hi guys, today I'm going to teach you about the hormones insulin and glucagon and how they affect the uh, gluconeogenesis and glycolysis depending upon the situation of the body. That either your body needs to maintain the glucose level, that is your gluconeogenesis, or either body needs the energy in the form of ATP by utilizing the glucose, right? That is your glycolysis. Now, what happens whenever you have taken the food, that carbohydrate rich food, it causes the release of uh, glucose in, into your blood so you have a lot of glucose after you having the food so this glucose causes the release of insulin and how it does this glucose go to the glute glute 2 transporter which are present on your pancreas so glucose enter through glute 2 transporter on the beta islet cells of the pancreas and that causes the release of a tremendous amount of insulin into your blood now this insulin when come into your blood over here i am drawing these circles these are your insulin and these triangles which are green in color they are showing your uh, this is showing your carbohydrate uh, sorry these are your glucose triangles and these circles are your insulin now insulin is responsible for the uptake of glucose into the cells so this glucose is go inside inside the cells and it is further utilized in the process of glycolysis to produce the energy by mnemonic way you can remember that insulin causes glucose into the cell like in so so insulin causes glucose into the cells so you can remember that insulin when ever secreted in your blood it causes glucose to get into the cells now glucose whenever it come into the cell it will be utilize in the glycolysis pathway to produce energy so it go in glycolysis to produce energy by going into the tca cycle and all that right now when you have like in between there a period of fasting like you have the breakfast then you have to have the dinner after four to six hours that is your lunch so in between when your glucose level will be far down in your blood then that is the point when your glucagon will be kicking so glucagon is released by the alpha islets of the pancreas cells right same pancreas cell but the alpha cells so glucagon is released now glucagon is responsible for the synthesis of glucose so how can you remember by mnemonic way glue glue that is glucose and gone that is like glucogenesis glucogenesis right so glucagon is responsible for the synthesis of the glucose over here these triangle they are showing you over here that these are the uh, glucose so when glucagon is released so glucagon is going to release this glucose into your blood how does the glucagon do that so that is it do by the breakdown of glycogen in your liver and in your muscle so glycogen is uh, released in the form of glucose so glycogen is divided like utilized a glycogenolysis has happened the glucagon is released into your blood so this is how glucagon is responsible for the maintenance of the blood glucose level now this is very important picture you have seen this one before so over here i am going to teach you about the effect of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate uh, and how it will control the process of gluconeogenesis and the glycolysis so this is fructose 2 6 bisphosphate as i showed told you that when you have taken the food you have glucose glucose is converted into fructose 6 phosphate and whenever glucose get attached with the phosphate group it is trapped into into your cells so now what happened as i told you that insulin will be released whenever you eat the food so this insulin is causes the activation of this enzyme which is called phosphofructose kinase 2 so by phosphofructokinase 2, fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So as we are using the kinase, so kinase is always responsible for the attachment of the phosphate into the product. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is converted into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by means that kinase attaches phosphate at the point of 2, position of 2, right? Now, just pay attention that fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is a product it is not the enzyme so this is very important product which is regulate your gluconeogenesis and the glycolysis so insulin act on pfk to release fru uh, make fructose 2 6 bisphosphate product and this product causes activation of this enzyme which is pfk1 so pkf1 is the rate limiting uh, step of the glycolysis before going down i will wanna pay you guys attention that whenever fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 
two six bisphosphate that is irreversible uh, reaction right so fructose two six bisphosphate causes activation of the pfk1 which is the rate limiting enzyme in the glycolysis and this enzyme causes conversion of this fructose six phosphate into fructose one six bisphosphate so again we are using the kinase so you are putting an other phosphate at the level position one of this product so fructose six phosphate is converted into fructose one six bisphosphate right again this this reaction is irresponsible so now from here this reaction will be go down to produce pyruvate then pyruvate go into your tca cycle and in tca cycle it produce energy right in the form of atp now all the enzyme have their regulator so what is the regulator of this pfk1 so atp so when you have a lot of energy through tca cycle the a lot of an a a atp is formed that atp go and inhibit this pfk1 why because now it sends that the body have a lot of energy we don't need more energy so it inhibit this enzyme which is phosphofructokinase 1 second in the citrate citrate is also the product of tca it ha also have negative effect on pfk1 like sensing the body or sensing this enzyme that stop we don't need more energy right so this is how your pyruvate uh, glucose go into the pyruvate and into tca cycle to produce the energy so now what happened this fructose to 6 bisphosphate is is very important product right our here it causes activation of the pfk1 on the same same way this enzyme also inhibit this enzyme sorry this product this is product it causes inhibition of this enzyme which is fructose 16 bis phosphatase right so why it is inhibiting this enzyme because this enzyme is very important for the process of gluconeogenesis now fructose 26 bis phosphate which is produced under the influence of insulin right it causes activation of pfk1 and causes glucose to go into the glycolysis and at the same time fructose 26 bisphosphate inhibit fructose 16 bisphosphatase to prevent the gluconeogenesis right so that is about this uh, this uh, gluco glycolysis pathway now when you have glucose and you produce a lot of energy and the in the blood the glucose level is the fall down so what is happen when your glucose level is fall down in the blood that is the point when your glucagon will be kick in right so glucagon gon will be kick in whenever you have reduced blood glucose levels so this glucagon it causes activation of this enzyme fructose 26 bisphosphatase so tase mean they are removing phosphate group from the product so fructose 26 bisphosphate bisphosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate by removing the phosphate at the position 2 right so when you removing fructose 26 bisphosphate into fructose 6 uh, phosphate this product will be knock out right when this product will be knock out there will be no effect of this enzyme on the pfk1 so you are actually stopping the glycolysis pathway right at the same time because you know that fructose 26 bisphosphate is causes inhibition of this enzyme and as i told you that this enzyme is very important in the process of the gluconeogenesis when you knock out this product by activation of fructo fructose 26 bisphosphatase by the help of glucagon fructose 26 bisphosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate and this inhibition will be knock out so this enzyme become active it convert fructose 16 bisphosphate into fructose 6 phosphate that is again you are using phosphatase so you are removing the phos gr phosphate uh, group from position 1 of this product so fructose 16 bisphosphate under the influence of fructose 16 bisphosphatase it converted into fructose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate is going into the glu uh, going to make the glucose so that is how glucagon is responsible for the making of glucose by the process of the gluconeogenesis that is all for today this is very important topic uh, then i will teach you rest of the topic like how insulin is released thank you so much guys stay tuned to me